This is the SF Productions Podcast Network. Nineteen eighty five's fall previews roll on. From the Pop Culture Bunker, I'm Mindy. And I'm Mark. You can check out our audio podcast, How I Got My Wife to Read Comics on iTunes, or on our website, sfpodcastnetwork.com. Well, we're moving into the second part of our 1985 TV Guide Fall Preview issue, because we just couldn't get it all in one episode. So let's continue with that. Moving on to Tuesday. Growing Pains, ABC. Meet the Seaver family. Stay-at-home psychiatrist, Dad Jason, Helen Thicke. Reporter mom Maggie, Joanne Kearns, son Mike, Kirk Cameron, daughter Carol, Tracy Gold, and younger son Ben, Jeremy Miller. Younger sister Chrissy, Ashley Johnson, was born in season five. Cousin Oliver. <laughs> well, no. Then there was a homeless kid who joined the family in season five. But if you're going to have a cousin Oliver, it might as well be Leonardo DiCaprio. <laughs> I don't think I watched that season. <laughs> the show ran for seven seasons, six of them in the top 30. There were a few controversies during the show's run. Tracy Gold battled with anorexia and had to be written out of a large part of the last season. One of Mike's on-screen girlfriends, Julie McCullough, was quickly written out after she posed for Playboy. Cameron reportedly pushed for her firing. He would become a hardline evangelical. One of Carol's on-screen boyfriends was played by a young Matthew Perry. His character was killed in a drunken driving accident as a very special episode. There were two reunion TV movies in 2000 and 2004. Our Family Honor, ABC. It's Blue Bloods meets The Sopranos in a drama about two families and their businesses, the NYPD and the mob. Kenneth McMillan and Eli Wallach played the two patriarchs along with Michael Madsen and Ray Liotta. A large cast and budget required decent ratings, which never happened, so the show was gone after 13 episodes. On Wednesday, The Insiders on ABC, Nicholas Campbell plays a freelance magazine writer and Stoney Jackson, his ex-con sidekick in this Miami Vice knockoff. That's a common phrase, too. Yes. It's very much in the same style. It even came from the same production company. There's a lot of undercover work involved, so undercover that the show only lasted a year. Charlie and Company, CBS, a sitcom starring Flip Wilson playing the dad of a middle-class African-American family. If this reminds you of a certain black comedian that recently fell from grace, you're right. The show was moved to Chicago and Flip plays a state worker, but otherwise it's the same show. Gladys Knight plays his wife Claire, I'm oh, sorry, Diana. There's a group of kids including future Urkel Jelly White. It wasn't quite the blockbuster NBC had, it only lasted 18 episodes. George Burns Comedy Week on CBS. At age 89, Burns was the oldest star of a TV series. That may be pushing it. He introduced a series of comedy anthology stories, again with the anthologies. Burns had always been the producer of his shows through the years and did so here. Steve Martin was an executive producer and actually wrote an episode. One of the episodes was a pilot for a short-lived sitcom, Leo and Liz in Beverly Hills. This show was gone after 13 episodes. Helltown. Robert Blake returns to TV as an ex-con, street-smart priest. He spends his time fighting for what's right in a ghetto parish. Sammy Davis Jr. was brought in to sing the theme song he had also done so for Beretta. It didn't help. The show was gone by December. Stir Crazy on CBS, based on the Gene Wilder, Richard Pryor movie about two wacky fugitives from prison, who, of course, didn't do it. Well, Joe Gazzaldo and Larry Riley are no Wilder and Pryor. Like many attempts to turn a hit film into a TV series, the show was gone after all of nine episodes. The Equalizer on CBS. Edward Woodward plays a retired intelligence agent who helps people in need pro bono as a way to atone for his previous life. They find him through a newspaper classified ad. Got a problem? Odds against you? Call the Equalizer. 212-555-4200. <laughs> I guess today you would just use TaskRabbit for this. The show may be better known for the guest stars, many just starting out. Macaulay Culkin, Melissa Joan Hart, Christian Slater, Kevin Spacey, John Goodman, Steve Buscemi, Brad, Bradley Whitford. The series ran for four seasons despite concerns over the level of violence involved. A film reboot starring Denzel Washington has a sequel coming out later this month. 
And on Thursdays, we had Lady Blue from ABC. Jamie Rose plays a beautiful but tough-as-nails cop. Critics at the time referred to her as Skirty Harry. The show had a backdoor pilot TV movie earlier that year. Like the Equalizer, various watchdog groups complained about the violence involved. The opening scene of the pilot shows the character getting a pedicure, seeing a bank robbery nearby, and she shoots and kills all three of the robbers and returns to her chair for her pedicure. <laughs> the show lasted for all of 14 episodes, partly due to ABC's constant time slot changes to appease watchdog groups. Dynasty 2, The Colbys on ABC, a spinoff of the soap mega-hit with the title later shortened to just The Colbys. Actors from the mothership appear in the series, such as Emma Sams. Aaron Spelling's influence, along with the huge clout of the main series, got movie stars to slum doing a soap opera. Charlton Heston, Ricardo Montalban, Barbara Stanwyck. Despite early high ratings, the series ran into the juggernaut of NBC's must-see TV, specifically Cheers and Night Court, and only ran for two seasons. A few of those characters jumped the sinking ship and returned to Dynasty. On Friday nights, we had The Twilight Zone on CBS, the final entry in 1985's anthology sweepstakes, and a continuation of Rod Serling's classic series. Spielberg's TZ film of the previous year may have given it a push as well. Writers such as the recently departed Harlan Ellison, Ray Bradbury, Arthur C. Clarke, and Stephen King were tapped for the series. Horror master Wes Craven directed several episodes. Initial plans to run the series at 10 p.m. and the resulting use of more adult content became a problem when the show actually aired in the 8 p.m. family hour. This hurt the ratings and the show never recovered. It ran for two seasons, then moved to first-run syndication for a third. The show would return in 2002 for a short UPN run, and then yet another revival was announced late last year with Get Out's Jordan Peele developing for CBS All Access. Misfits of Science, NBC a superhero show perhaps a bit ahead of its time. Mm -hmm. A research scientist, Dean Paul Martin, at yet another shadowy do-gooder private company, recruits young mutants to fight crime. Kevin Peter Hall plays a 7-foot-4-inch scientist who can shrink to any size. T uh, Mark Thomas Miller is a rock musician electrocuted by an amp, and now he can throw lightning bolts. And a young Courtney Cox, between being a Springsteen dancer and friends is a telekinetic. A fourth character with freezing powers only appeared in the pilot when Marvel Comics compared him to Iceman. This series lasted 18 episodes and screams the 1980s. Spencer for Hire on ABC. Based on a series of crime novels starring Robert Urich as the title character returning to TV post Vegas. He's a literate private eye and former boxer living in Boston and the show was shot on location there. He's also an excellent cook, so he's a magnet for the girls. Spencer has an enforcer named Hawk, an ex-con with an ethical code, played by Avery Brooks pre-DS9. Hawk got his own series later. The series ran for three seasons, followed by four TV movies. A possible reboot in 2010 fell apart after the death of the book's author, Robert Parker. So to recap, in 1985, we got an actual even split between hits meaning the show that went more than one season, and flops, and we so I had 12 each, with hits, Crazy Like a Fox, Moonlighting, Mr. Belvedere, The Golden Girls, 227, MacGyver, Amazing Stories, Growing Pains, The Equalizer, Dynasty 2, The Colbys, The Twilight Zone, and Spencer for Hire. So, a very good year for television. Yes, and it was a year that I watched hardly at all, <laughs> Because it was like my first year out of college and working and I had no TV. <laughs> so most of these shows are new to me and some of them I could go back and watch. Mm -hmm. As could you. Or you can check out our audio podcast, How I Got My Wife to Read Comics on iTunes or on our website, sfpodcastnetwork.com. From the Pop Culture Bunker, I'm Mindy. And I'm Mark. Thanks for watching.